then I've heard historical scholars state that, well, you know, you can maybe, maybe you don't believe that Jesus exists as God, but there is at least some enough corroborative kind of documents to show that he exists as a historical person. Um, and then people would go back and forth on that and then have different arguments and say, well, no, that's not the case either. I don't even believe in the historical Jesus. And then that makes me question, well, you know, if we have historical documents supporting it, then begs the question, well, why should we believe any historical person existed? Then we have to, if we're going to question that, then why don't we question Alexander the Great or, or, you know, Caesar or any of the others? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you mentioned Alexander the Great and so forth. His, uh letters that were written by him were written 100 years after, as compared, for example, the New Testament that was written maybe 10 to 20 years after, you know, so um, it's very short where when Jesus died in crucifixion, rose to heaven, and then maybe 10 to 20 years after they, they wrote the New Testament. But whenever people say, well, that's the time where people started to believe in Jesus or started to like write evidence about Jesus. Uh, we have to also bear in mind that before people start writing, the theology or the belief was already presupposed even way before people were writing about it. So even before 10 to 15 years that people were writing the document of Jesus' life and so forth, people were already believing it way before 10 to 15 years. So when, a, when an historical document is written, they have to as an historian, we also have to bear in mind that people were already believing it way before. So uh, you have the New Testament itself, you know, with the Dead Sea, Dead sea Scrolls, as I mentioned before, uh, are documents of 5,000 New, uh, new Testaments. Uh, and closer to that, let's look at the historical view of Socrates, for example. Uh, Socrates never wrote himself or never wrote anything, as far as what we know. We get Socrates' life from Plato. So we have more documents about Jesus than Socrates. Do we say that Socrates never existed? Or Alexander the Great, who, you know, his record was much more later. You know, and as comparison to any historical figure, we have much more evidence of Jesus than any historical figure there is. Even Dr. Bar Herman would actually agree with that testimony would even agree to the extent that, you know, certain people don't believe that Jesus ever existed. Even again, the scholar Bart Ehrman, who is profound on saying that Jesus never resurrected, even claims that Jesus was a living person. So you have a subfield of atheists who believe that Jesus never existed, which are the myth mythists, you know, in Milwaukee. Uh, but Again, the scholarly perspective is that he did exist. And now we have much more documents from Jesus than most um, late antiquity figures, such as Alexandria, Alexander the Great and Socrates. Even much more later, we don't have much evidence. Let's look at the life of Abraham Lincoln. We don't have much evidence of the life of Abraham Lincoln either. Does that mean Abraham Lincoln never existed? Obviously, he did. Many people would be like saying, okay, well, you know, he did exist. But then again, it bears the question, you know, just because we don't have much evidence in something doesn't necessarily imply that that individual person never existed. It's the same way as how even in the modern world, you know, there could be a person, you know, it could be me and you. I've never met you before. How do you know I existed? You know, you just have that from uh, Jose, but then you never met me before. You just have maybe if I give you, uh, if, the message that Jose told you about meeting with me in Zoom, all you have is that. So that philosophical perception is also something that people have to keep in mind when it comes to the historiosity of an individual figure. You know, I believe Socrates existed. I believe Alexander the Great existed, but I wouldn't even go as far as to say they never existed just because we don't have so much evidence on, on a particular order. Also, I mean, bear in mind, where's the... Where's the line to draw in regards to if the if the person existed in history or not? Do we have to have like 5,000 manuscripts? Do we have to have 6,000 manuscripts? Like, where do we draw the line in that sense? So I would say Jesus has so much evidence as compared to the late antiquity figures 
And even looking at it in modern sense, 1600s, 1700s, we have some uh, historical figures that we don't have so much evidence of. That in the New Testament, we have 5,000 manuscripts. And keep in mind, 5,000 manuscripts is less because more than likely we have much more manuscripts. Every time a archeologist research either that sea scroll and so forth. Yeah, that's really good. I like that. It just fascinates me how, like you were saying, there's more documents on, on Jesus's existence than other historical figures. That just blows my mind. And and um, and just to clarify, like it's not just like the biblical like text of Jesus. It's also other ones, right? Like, yeah, that's that's yeah, really yeah. cool. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. So we have in the first century at least four or five documents that talk about Jesus, you know, outside of the New Testament. We also have, you know, the uh, Greek historian, Jewish historians that do talk about the existence of Jesus, you know. So even, for example, the Jewish uh, traditions of the Babylonian Talmud and so forth, talking about a figure that uh, Jesus of Nazareth and so forth. So not only do you have the New Testament, Christian writers, but you also have Jewish, Greeks, and pagans talking about a figure in, in the AD 30 that got crucified by the Romans. So, yeah, you have not only just a lot of evidence, but you have different types of evidence as well. And the fact that it's consistent is also really speaks to it. Yes. Yes. And what's interesting about that, too, is that just the same way as how the New Testament. So in each individual evidence of Jesus, we have something that is similar but distinct. What's unique about having it distinct is that if you have much, you have a lot of documents uh, and they're all the same, then you would be kind of skeptical and say, hmm, it seems kind of weird that all the documents are all the same. It kind of seems like, you know, all the writers came together and were just writing the same thing. But if it's distinct, but then has some similarities, then it's much more unique in that sense. More believable. Yeah, it's almost to say, you know, there was different perspectives, right? Different points of view. Yes. And so that that goes to show that somebody else, you know, was uh, another interpreter, you know, who might have passed down and that inf received that information, wrote it down, or might have seen it themselves. Right. Because so, we're subjective human beings. If two people go to New York Square, they're going to have different descriptions of the same place. So I think, yeah, like we were kind of alluding to, Edgar, is like, you know, if it was exactly the same, then we'd have reason to be skeptical and say, well, they're just making this up because it's too, you know, it's obvious, you know, but right. So like if you, everyone has a different account of it, but there's at least some consistency, then it's more believable is what I'm hearing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Also bear in mind that when, when the, the first testimony of Jesus resurrection were women and in the Jewish uh, tradition, women are not regarded as being highly favored. So, you know, why would the apostles themselves write woman testimony to right. Jewish audience as well? Right. So, exactly. Can you repeat that again? The, so women were writing to the Jews about their testimonies? Well, in the New Testament, we see the first testimony of Jesus' resurrection from a woman's perspective. Okay. But yes. from the Jewish audience, you know, in the Jewish tradition, women testimony are not regarded as high, neither in, in a way the Roman tradition. So why would the apostles themselves write specifically that women were one of the first people who testimony about the resurrection of Jesus if it wasn't highly favored in the in the Jewish tradition? So that's something, you know, that is unbiased, you yeah. know, in that sense. If it was a work of fiction, then they wouldn't have had a woman testify. It just wouldn't make sense for the culture. Exactly. Absolutely. It, fact, yeah, because they would want to appeal to the, the Jewish audience. Yeah, and the fact that five, I think it was 500 people saw the resurrected Jesus too, and, and that's recorded in history. I think that's, I mean, people can't hallucinate the same thing. That's just not possible. So I think that's really yeah. fascinating. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. I guess it goes back to the argument of hallucinations of the resurrection, which a lot of skeptics have pointed out, and that, you know, it doesn't work that way if it's like you've mentioned, 5,000 people seeing the exact same thing. Yeah, not even two people. The chances of two people hallucinating the same thing has never been, really happened as far as I know. So Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>